I gotta blur out your license. <laughs> compete I feel like every I feel like the world fades away mm -hmm. I feel like everything fades yeah. away and I feel like it's I've done the work and it's just time to have fun every time I compete I feel like I'm a different person because I feel like I've successfully integrated whatever I've been working on into my game like for example in Sweden we were working on a double sleeve and then the next competition I was able to play double sleeve you know what I mean I feel like a lot of people it takes a while for them to uh, implement the things they've been working on into their competition. You, know? mm -hmm. you see like guys like, you know, work on their bolos and then when they go to compete, they don't do it. You know what I mean? And things like that. So Sometimes in the training, I feel I kind of think too much. And other times in the training, I, I like, you know, try to get to that flow state, but it's it's so much more often that I'm just trying to think and I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I get caught up in fixing mistakes and mm -hmm. everything than I do like, all right, bro, like, just have fun and just train. Because for me, fixing a mistake and that little buzz I get, like, that is fun. Mm -hmm. That's where I get my fun, mm -hmm. you know? And then using those things is like, it's like, once I get that buzz, I'm like, oh, it's going to work. And once I yeah. believe it's going to work, I'm like, okay, what's next? What's mm -hmm. next? Like, I'm always like, on to the next thing. What's the next thing? Like, that's mm -hmm. what I really want to do. That's what I really want to, I always want to have, like, the next piece. Mm -hmm. And for me, I feel like that's like where I get the fun but then now I, I find myself like the more I get into that flow state and I, I just push the envelope of like the movement and thinking and you know having the next reaction mm -hmm. already and just seeing how I can let things flow yeah. and that's where I'm having like the most fun recently yeah so and that's definitely something like I picked up from you I feel yeah I feel like it helps each other like to like have those sessions where you're you're more quantified and, and, and thinking more like what your next step is going to be and then uh, versus just flowing and then doing the same moves but at a faster rate yeah. and uh, and then seeing how it's expressed when you're actually flowing and when you're actually going at a faster rate right? yeah. versus like when you're doing it slow and then how those adjustments hinder or make the move better. Yeah, because when I go with the lower belt, I can work on passing like 25, 30 times mm -hmm. per round instead of like, you know, oh, I, on you, like I'm lucky to get a solid pass attempt per round, yeah. something like that. And it's like, oh man. So I guess that's another reason I never really hit that flow mm -hmm. state is the difference in the level. And I guess I want to just like sauce everybody and then mm -hmm. just like, I, I want to be so good and it's like there's so much work to get there so I'm just always doing that work but I do feel that a lot when I roll with the lower yeah. belts now that you say that I don't yeah. think I really realized that before that's helpful This track right here is called the natural. It's the natural. You know what I mean? Word it up, word it up. I'ma just get into my thing. Do you know thing. how it's going? You know what I mean? Word it up. Just do what I do naturally, cause it naturally come to me. Right, right. Big up to all my people. You we know what I'm saying? Just gonna rap a little something. You know what I'm saying? I'ma rap a little something. You know what I mean? I'ma do it like this. I'ma do it, Cardo. Check word it out. out. Luxurious being enterprise and vocals for analyzing. I move defying the speech more deeper than Posada gave right. me the highest esteem, like honey supreme. Lick the shot off like spot, like the laser beams. Uh -huh. It's the greatest vocabulary in the era. My styles vary like leather snakes rocking the sever. Looking yeah. for ever forty keys, cook a measure to the treasure from these pedigrees. I flow larger than seas. The story's right. on peace. Getting sexed in the telly from big who's in the run is up with Halle Berry. I fought for more than ever. But pitch a shade like the arm of satchel. Beware from the strength of the natural down word up
check it out. Now from below, I say I try like a Japanese zero. Lyrics of kilos, the outcome, nothing but silos. Lido's unprofessional pros alone. Enjoy the sound, it's now emitting out the microphone. I'm everywhere, personify, create astonishing lines. Go inside and pull a paragraph or two from my mind. Then right. we a competition and recline inside the vision of a candy type of situation. Hit them in all positions. Let it be known, my apparatus is stone. Inject the hypertone inside the space between your headphones. I'm naturally grown, believing it's sown. Just like a surgeon, money was splurging. That means I got to leave it burning. Right. The simple fact, I'm like a map when I hit. Reality perceived to be the single counterfeit shit. Doing my thing, thing. No I doubt. Picture K like the arm of Satchel. Beware what? from the strength of the natural. Yeah. If you had asked me last, like two years ago, what I think about myself as a jiu-jitsu athlete, I probably would've been like, you know, just your average guy. But nowadays, I truly believe that I was meant for this. I was, I was built for jiu-jitsu. Uh, I feel like I'm, I can change the sport. I can push the envelope of creativity. I can add something to this sport that will last a, a long time. Um, I am an athlete. I put that first and foremost in front of everything, in front of my relationships, in front of other responsibilities. I do everything in my life for jujitsu, and everything else comes afterwards. And I've made this sacrifice the day after I graduated, and uh, it's been paying off. And I knew it would pay off because I've only been training full time for uh, I've only been training full time for a year now. And when I started competing. I felt like I could hang with the best guys in the world at my at my belt rank, at my weight category. Guys that have been training full time for years now. And I felt like just putting the time that I put in, that I've been able to close the gap and I've been able to compete with them. Music is like jujitsu in a sense that things need space. Instruments, sounds, frequencies need space so that nothing clashes together. Just like jujitsu, you know? You can't play De La Hiva when the guy's super tight to you. You have to change the space between you and the, the person in front of you so you can play De La Hiva properly. And if you understand that, you can apply that to music. Now your snare drums sound crisper. You, you can apply that to relationships, all right? You tell the person you love, give me some space, let me deal with my emotions. And if you carry this on through your life, if everything you do, you try to see how you can apply to the other things, I truly believe that just that's just gonna better you as a person. And you know, if you're if you become a better person, then you become better at jiu-jitsu. So it comes full circle. You know, if you train jiu-jitsu properly, and you don't have to be a full-time athlete. This is just something I realized doing jiu-jitsu full-time every day because it, my mind was occupied with other things. But you don't have to be a full-time athlete. You could be a hobbyist. You could train jiu-jitsu to compete local tournaments. Uh, but as long as you try to uh, invest more than just time, but you try to invest your attention and you try to push the envelope on how you look at a position, how you look at a problem, and you take that lesson and you apply it to other parts of your life, you could be successful at anything you want. I met Danny at the most opportune moment in my life, and it was exactly at that time in my life where I was deciding between uh, taking on a full-time job, working in the lab, or pursuing jiu-jitsu full-time and just dropping everything and moving back with my parents and pursuing jiu-jitsu. And Danny was that person to me that I felt like I would have benefited from having earlier in my life. Uh, he's kind of like a brother, uh, a, a, a non-blood related brother that had the same goals as me. We shared the same motivation, the same drive, and we saw that with this friendship, we could accomplish anything. And this is something you see with a lot of the greats. You know, the Mendez brothers have each other, the Meow brothers have each other. Uh, you know, a lot of champions, a lot of great athletes come in pairs. And the fact that I met Danny at a point in my life where I was scared to take that leap towards the unknown, uh, I met him at a point in my life where it was easy for me to just be like, you know, let me just take on this, 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 uh, let me just choose security over risk and, and my dreams. Uh, but, you know, Danny's that type of person that lifted me up and said, look, I've been working on this as well. I've been doing this by myself for a long time. Join me on this journey. Next thing you know, we moved in together. Uh, the pandemic happened and now we're in a matted basement uh, training all day, every day. Danny reminds me a lot of myself, and but I kind of look at him as like an older brother of mine. Uh, he, you know, we kind of motivate each other and we work off each other's weaknesses and strengths. 
you know, uh, I'm more of a thinker, Danny's more of a doer. So when we get together, uh, a lot of things can happen. And, you know, if I start slacking off, he, he tells me to, to, to pick, it, pick it back up, you know. And if, he's, if he starts slacking up, I have to have a one-on-one -on -one with him and tell him, dude, you know what it is. You know what the drill is. This is our goal. We're going to stop at nothing to achieve it. And, you know, the past six months have been rough, man. Uh, we've been scraping by, uh, teaching private lessons together, uh, putting our money together so we can travel to compete. Because, as you guys know, Jiu-Jitsu doesn't have a lot of money, you know. So we've been doing everything we can. We have supportive people around us to, to do everything we can to succeed. And, you know, that starts here at home, you know. Uh, right now, there's no academies open. So we took all the mats we had to our names and we put them down on the basement floor. And we literally start training from sunrise to sundown. We're talking about jujitsu, watching jujitsu, sharing techniques, sharing thoughts. And I truly believe that without Danny, I wouldn't have come this far yet. Uh, I was able to kind of speed my progress by having someone with those similar goals and with that similar drive to kind of uh, bounce ideas and, and, and pick each other up when we were down together. And this is a friendship that without a doubt is going to last forever and we're going we're gonna to do this thing, man. We're going to go to the very end. Jiu-Jitsu really teaches people how to fall in love with learning and for me that's the thing that keeps me going the most is, is that feeling of kind of curing my ignorance you know and it, it, it stems out further than Jiu-Jitsu but just in Jiu-Jitsu is every day you think you know and then you figure out something else that you didn't you're like I didn't even know that was possible and so you find one technique connecting to another technique and one concept connecting to another concept and it all just builds. One of the most important factors in jiu-jitsu for me personally and what I see working with kids and you know people all walks of life and everything isn't just how it brings people together but how it inspires confidence in people. Confidence comes from competency. So the more proficient you get at a skill, the more confident you get at a skill and you build that skill and you work on that skill and hone it. Um, the more confident you're gonna be in that skill, the more you're gonna know that you can perform under pressure. And this is what jujitsu is about at its core. When you know you can handle yourself in one area, but you know that if you just get competent in that area, if you can get a little smarter, if you can get a little bit more skilled in that area, it'll completely change your entire life. Because now, instead of just going through life, you're thriving in every area. And if you're not, you understand immediately what you need to do to become competent, to be building that skill, to then build that confidence in whatever area. If you have trouble speaking to people, that's a skill that you can build the skills up and then go and then do it. And this is something that I've always done is tried to surround myself with people who are smarter than me, people who are better than me, people who um, have way more expertise and skill and everything than I do in hopes that I can learn from them, and I always do. 
and I've learned so many things from so many people in this way um, that it's, it's very hard for me to look back and see myself succeeding any other way. And after meeting so many people from all different walks of life and everything that are at the top level of whatever it is that they do, that is the driving and deciding factor so many times. When I met Nick Salas, this is, he was that guy. And we both had the same goals and we clicked right away and we both just got to work. When we both just got to work, we became unstoppable right then. Then the results started coming. I feel when we go to a competition and we're in the same bracket and you know it's time to close out the division or whatever it is, like when I see Nick win a match, I feel like I win that match, you know? And I know it's the same way the other way around. When we train, it's literally I just teach him how to beat me. And then he teaches me how to beat him. And it just we just keep leveling up on each other. And it's this constant like battle back and forth where we're just like trying to push the other one closer to their goals. And if either of us has an off day or a day where we feel like, oh, we don't really want to keep doing that work, we do it anyway. We push the other one. We make them do it because your, your dreams don't care about your feelings. 